Welcome to uh, our, talk, our session on, on Copperhead. Um, before I forget, make sure that you have your raffle ticket because we're giving away one of these guys at the end. And they're pretty awesome. They're pretty good. They're big, big robots. So the name of our session, as you know, orchestrate all the storage things. Um, an OpenStack data showing the OpenStack data availability using Copperhead. Today, we have Anan Palagudu, Paladugu, and Ready, and they're gonna um, lead us through it. Uh, Ready is from Intel Corporation, and Anand is from EMC Corporation. Uh, Copperhead, as you know, is an open source organization and a product, and we're taking people from everywhere. And with that, I give you Ready. All right, can you hear me? Is it on? Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to spend first uh, probably 10 minutes um, going over, um, giving, you, giving you a little bit of a background on what exactly is the Copperhead architecture. And uh, we will uh, drill deeper into a specific use case that Anand is going to go over. Um, and then we'll talk about the community engagement. So we are really looking forward to you guys actually getting a glimpse of what exactly is Copperhead, um, how can you play a role in influencing the community uh, technical direction as well as the uh, contribution aspect. Okay, so before I jump into the Copperhead architecture, so let's go through the uh, software defined storage architecture. What do we mean by software defined storage? Um, in a nutshell, software defined storage, you know, brings in the cloud architecture benefits for the storage side of the world. Uh, what do we mean by that? Um, you know, how do you completely automate the provisioning aspects of the storage resources sitting in a data center? Um, how do you provide self-serviceability um, and a single pane of uh, management? Um, the key element of software-defined storage architecture is the SDS controller. Um, so if you were to look at the, uh, the green box, that SDS controller, um, it has two major uh, aspects. One is, um, SDS controller has visibility into the storage resources deployed in a data center. So what do I mean by storage resources? These are the resources uh, from traditional appliances. We call them as scale-up. Uh, things like SAN, NAS, um, all flash arrays. Um, or uh, it can be a scale-out architecture um, based on the open source software stack deployed on standard high volume servers, or it can be a proprietary software like Scale IO deployed on standard high volume servers. Irrespective of the type of the storage backend that is deployed in a data center, um, controller needs to have a visibility into those storage resources um, and provide the services to applications via some sort of an orchestration that it is running under. Um, Typically, what you look for is the applications make storage requests, not by specific array, but rather requirements. Um, the requirements could be, uh, we call them as the service level agreement, agreements as well as service level objectives. Things like how much capacity I need, what kind of performance I'm looking for, what is the latency, um, how should I manage these volumes over the course of its lifetime. Maybe I need to back up periodically and so on. So applications provide those requirements. Controller having the visibility of storage resources, we'll figure out the best way to optimally uh, allocate the storage uh, request coming in from applications. Once that is done, um, it completely gets out of the data, the, uh, the data path um, between the application and the storage resource. So your data path typically happens to be, you have a volume, um, you may use iSCSI, fiber channel over ethernet, NFS, um, or some sort of application specific proprietary protocols. Um, Irrespective of that, that is a data path. Controller does not involve in the data path, only the control plane operations. So why do we need um, open source SDS controller? As you guys know, storage management is a, is a pretty big challenge. It's a challenge that the whole industry is facing with. What do I mean by storage um, automation challenges? Things like completely automating the provisioning of the storage resources. Um, how do you place the storage resources optimally? 
how do you protect the volumes across multiple data centers, um, migrating your volumes, uh, the whole rolling upgrade, HA, all those pieces need to be included in the SDS controller. So the question is, how do we do, the, do this in open way? Um, and we want to solve them, um, but we want, to make, we want to solve them in an open way. And we need to be able to support multiple orchestration frameworks as well. Um, things like the traditional uh, uh, orchestration stacks like Microsoft and VMware, um, cloud stacks like OpenStack, and then cloud native computing stacks like uh, Docker, Kubernetes, Mesos, and so on. Um, the controller needs to be able to work across a wide variety of orchestration stacks while managing both scale up and scale out and addressing the storage management challenges. So the, what is Copperhead? Um, Copperhead is the open source SDS controller. Um, it provides a capa foundation capability to manage storage resources deployed in a data center, um, a discovery capability, logically pooling those resources based on certain requirements that the data center admin desires. Maybe you have a capacity pool, maybe you have a performance pool. Uh, you need to be able to group those uh, resources into certain pools based on what services that you want to stand up. Um, and then completely automating, automating the uh, management aspects of uh, storage resources deployed in a data center. So let's look at from the bottoms up. Um, so uh, key foundation element in Copperhead SDS controller is how do you discover wide variety of storage systems deployed in a data center? Um, traditional as well as the scale out uh, storage backends, we need to be able to discover them. That's a fundamental aspect of discovery. Um, you also need to be able to discover uh, fiber channel uh, networks, uh, the whole configuration aspects and the topology and so on, the connectivity aspects, and then the host configuration. So where exactly you are going to consume the storage resources. So typically the discovery includes all those three elements. Your storage resource discovery, your networking aspects, and your compute where the storage resources are getting consumed. Once you discover the storage systems, you want to be able to classify them. Classification can be fairly advanced. Um, in, in, within the context of Copperhead, you're going to see the uh, you know, use case where the classification can be based on uh, certain types of policies. You want thin provisioning or thick provisioning? Do you want um, continuous volumes and so on? So all kinds of filters you can use to be able to figure out, this is what I want to stand up for a given pool. Here are the types of storage backends I'm looking for. Um, so it can actually filter it. It can give you the storage resources that meet your SLO policy criteria, and you can actually cherry pick those storage backends and pull them together. And then the uh, third element is the end-to-end -end storage automation. Um, the foundation element is how do you uh, intelligently select resources deployed in a data center, and how do you place and service the resource requests coming in from applications in an optimal way. Um, you need to be able to support local and remote productions, somewhat advanced capabilities, SAN zoning, host attachment, uh, host configuration, and maybe load balancing on the host side SAN fiber channel ports as well. Um, migration aspect, how do you migrate the data from one storage backend to the other storage backend? How do you migrate one release to the next release in the Copperhead SDS controller? Um, how do you do the, the rolling upgrades? How do you retire a specific storage backend? How do you add a new storage backend? All those things need to be completely automated. Um, Copperhead provides that kind of end-to-end -end storage management. Um, the, these features need to be exposed via open APIs, REST APIs. Uh, there are two ways to consume um, the storage management services. One is you can use the REST APIs command line interface, or you can actually use the service catalogs as a way to deploy uh, shrink-wrapped packages. So things like you want to deploy, let's say, uh, SAP, uh, you know, uh, application with certain backend uh, configuration completely and in a complete automated way, you have a service catalog for that. Maybe you have a service catalog for uh, Oracle database application that deploys 20 different VMs, maybe with remote replication intact, all those things. So you can actually do package um, the basic foundational features into a set of catalogs, and you can expose them to end customers. Uh, last but not least, um, irrespective of uh, you know, the storage management uh, plumbing, it needs to work across all orchestration stacks, not just one of them, right? So that's a key uh, thing we are marching towards. Uh, things like it has to work with VMware vCenter, uh, Microsoft, uh, OpenStack, 
and then the uh, you know, emerging cloud computing frameworks as well, things like Docker, Kubernetes, and so on. So that's kind of what we think uh, the open source SDS controller should be addressing, manage wide variety of backends, work across different orchestration stacks, intelligently manage the storage resources, make sure you can actually do the data migration, the lifecycle management of your storage resources, as well as the SDS controller, need to be um, you know, comprehended as well in the design. So these are all the foundation features that exist today. Um, at, you know, but we are also looking at what's the best way to integrate into the orchestration frameworks. We have OpenStack integration. We have VMware integration. We are looking at what's the best way to do that with Docker, um, the other emerging cloud native computing frameworks. OK, so with that, uh, hopefully you got a glimpse of what do we mean by, what do we mean by SDS controller? Um, what exactly does Copperhead provide today? Um, we'll go through one of the use cases that Anand is going to cover. After that, we will look at the community uh, roadmap, what we are currently working on, just to give you a flavor of what is happening right now so that you can actually participate and help us. OK, with that, Anand. Thanks, Reddy. Uh, hi, everyone. So as Hura has introduced me, my name is Anand. I'm a product manager at EMC. Uh, my part of the presentation is actually to show you how Copperhead orchestrates use cases so we can provide highly available storage in an open stack environment. Right? Uh, we'll do this in four parts. I think we'll first define the problem scenarios, uh, one for an app admin and one for a storage admin, uh, review the EMC platform technology that actually provides HA storage, and then the third part is, you know, understand how actually Viper, as Copperhead orchestrates use cases along with Sender to provide uh, highly available storage as well as data migration. And then the fourth part is actually go through the demo so you can clearly understand, you know, how this is all done. Uh, am I on the right slide? No. Okay. So in defining the problem scenarios, right, you know, application admins always want to define SLAs for their applications. Uh, particularly for mission critical applications, they want the data loss to be zero, right, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the event of a disaster, and they want the downtime to be zero as well, right? So it's actually defining RPO and RTO as zero. Uh, it's easy to achieve a zero RPO if you have a synchronous replication between two sites, but it's not that easy to achieve zero RTO, right? The downtime should be zero, so that's the requirement. From a storage admin persona perspective, the problem scenario is they do want to migrate workloads to a different data center, so to balance the infrastructure resources that happens every now and then, right? So then they want to do it in a non-disruptive way, which is a key challenge. So those are the two problem scenarios that we're talking about today. And then vplex is a storage platform from EMC that provides the HA technology that will actually let us uh, orchestrate use cases to provide HA in an open stack environment. So as you see, uh, vplex provides high availability and resiliency by allowing users to create mirrors for their storage volumes. The mirrors can be created in a single site or across sites. And after mirrors volumes are created, vplex will allow you to access data from any site. You know, these sites are at a synchronous distance. So site A and site B, you could access data from site A or site B. Right? So that's what the mirror does. Viplex also allows you to migrate data from one array to the other array, whether it's in the local data center or in the remote data center. And then finally, with the recover point, uh, it also has the ability to give you a local protection or a remote DR protection. So when it's actually protected in the remote site, site C, we call that solution uh, Viplex Metro Point. So there are three ways to deploy Viplex, a single site HA, if you deploy it across two sites, that's Viplex Metro cluster. And then if you want DR, that's the Viplex Metro point solution, right? So that's Viplex. So Copperhead, working with Cinder in an open stack environment, orchestrates three use cases for Viplex. Uh, it provisions highly available storage for EMC and non-EMC arrays. Uh, it actually can orchestrate data migration use cases for vplex. We'll actually see how it's all done. And then also it has the ability to do uh, change the normal storage to a highly available storage, right? You may have provisioned storage for an application, and then later on it became critical, and you wanted to provide HA option for the application. Uh, Copperhead can actually can uh, convert that to highly available storage. 
So I'll give you a high-level overview of how things flow in this slide, but we actually have a demo to uh, you know, show everything. So once you have registered the third-party array driver, sender driver, and the copperhead sender driver, the workflow is essentially like this, right? The end user goes to Horizon UI. He requests a volume to be created. OpenStack sender gets the request, and then it's passed down to SDS controller, copperhead. And copperhead, using the sender southbound interface, creates provisioning on the non-EMC arrays. And that storage that it provisioned actually is now mapped to vplex, right, through SAN. So the storage that Copperhead provision here is now available to vplex as a backend storage, right? And after that, Copperhead uses the native integration that it has with vplex to create a virtual volume, which actually represents two volume mirrors, right? And then this volume is given back to OpenStack. Cinder attaches that volume to the instance that you have created. So that is how the whole workflow goes. So we'll actually get into the demo next. Uh, so I have to get off the deck. So this is actually a live demo, but we recorded it for convenience sake. So I may have to pause it sometimes to talk about the stuff. Actually, this is a little faster than. OK. So this is the Copperhead uh, dashboard. When you log into Copperhead, this is a web-based UI. Uh, you see all the uh, infrastructure that is available to you in Copperhead, the physical assets, the logical uh, assets that you have created, the state of the uh, uh, Copperhead instance, whether it's stable, and then what capacity you have for free, right? The total capacity, and then how much capacity you have used, et cetera. So before you orchestrate use case and any storage array, the storage array has to be added to Copperhead, right? So if you go into storage systems, you'll see that we have a bunch of non-EMC arrays here. Uh, the three-part array, the Fujitsu Eternus array, and then the EMC VNX array. So all the three arrays have been added to Copperhead. And as Reddy was talking about, the fundamental value of Copperhead is that it abstracts hardware and it creates logical pools of storage. So if you were to go into virtual arrays, you would see that we have created a virtual array called OpenStack. This virtual array represents the vplex array and all the backend storage arrays and all the fiber channel ports that are required to provision storage. Right? So that's the abstraction here. Uh, user is not aware of what is below this layer. Oh, I think my mouse has moved a little bit, sorry. And after you have created the virtual array, we can go ahead and create a virtual pool. Virtual pool, the notion of virtual pool in Copperhead is that you, know, you can actually define uh, storage um, on a policy basis. right? For example, in this case, we are creating a virtual pool, uh, which is for highly available storage. So we can define what hardware we want here. It's a third party block and highly available storage, we actually pick the vplex local option. And you can also define other policies like you know how many snapshots you want, et cetera, in terms of data production. So this is where we select the storage pool, right? We actually picked up Eternus storage pool for this pool. So the screen just shows you that the pool is created. And actually, the, here what's happening is now we have gone switched back to Horizon UI. We'll create a tiny instance called Copperhead Demo. So the instance should be ready. And now we want to provision a volume for this instance. Right? So since Copperhead Cinder Driver has already been registered, the volume that we're going to create here is coming from Copperhead. 
So let's call this volume data volume. And the pool we're going to choose is the pool that we just created, right? Size 10 GB, create the volume. So the volume is getting created. So if you switch back to Copperhead events, you'll see that, uh, I don't know if it's actually clear, you'll see that the create volume operation is underway, right? Copperhead has received the request and it's creating the volume on the three part array. So it creates the volume, it adds the volume to the uh, masking view so that the vplex can see it and it creates the vplex virtual volume as well. So all of this in the back end is being orchestrated by Copperhead. So we're going to attach that volume to the instance that we just created, tiny. So the volume is attached, and the volume is actually dev pdb. So we we'll, can actually now go to the instance console and create a file system on the volume that we just attached. There is no way I can speed up, so. <laughs> So creating the file system. And there's a reason why we are doing this, right? Actually, we wanted to show how the failover uh, or you know, disaster recovery condition works. So it becomes seamless to you then. So create a directory, mount the file system, and then create a file. OK, so that is the initial provisioning, right? What we have done so far is we have an OpenStack environment with Copperhead and then third-party arrays, EMC and third-party arrays. User has requested a volume to be created from OpenStack Horizon. Copperhead has actually provisioned the volume, and that's the vplex virtual volume, right? The two other use cases that we'll uh, actually go through is, you know, one is where you just created the volume on 3PAR, Right, you want that volume to be migrated to the Fujitsu, Fujitsu Eternus array. How does that work? Right, how does our, our Copperhead do that? That's one use case. The other use case is you know, the volume that we created will actually make it a highly available volume, meaning create mirror on the other data center, uh, take off one array, and then see what impact does it have on the application. Right, so that's the highly available part. So we'll go to the first one. Oh, sorry, I didn't click. So the initial use case of migration, the workflow starts in the Horizon UI. You pick the volume and then say change volume type. So that actually triggers a data migration workflow in Copperhead. Copperhead communicates with Vplex and seamlessly transfers data from one array to the other. So as you see here, retyping is happening. And then if you were to go back to Copperhead console, you would see that Copperhead actually creates a volume on the other array where you wanted the data to be migrated to, and then the orchestrate the uh, migration workflow through vplex. And then uh, all this is happening, um, all of this is happening when application is still alive, right? Customer doesn't even notice anything. So everything is non-disruptive. So there's not enough data, so the migration actually happened quickly, right? So now, as you see, the volume is eternal. 
And if you go to the host and then say my file, my file is still there, right? So you simply moved data from one array to the other array. The last use case is you know, uh, convert the storage to highly available storage, take one leg off, and then see what impact does it have on the application. So that's what actually gives you zero RTO. Even if one array is down, you wouldn't even notice a thing. So the way you create highly available storage is you know, uh, go to Copperhead UI. In the service catalog, there is a feature called create continuous copy. So this create continuous copy function actually creates a mirror for the production volumes on the remote data center. So we pick the same volume, data volume, that we created. Uh, we call it data volume mirror. And then order for mirror. So mirror is getting created. So again, I think you know, Vplex has to make sure that the volumes are created on the other end, and then the synchronization happens between the two copies. All of that is done. And then if you click on the data volume, and then uh, if you actually see the continuous copies, they are created. Right? Data volume error zero is created. So the way we can actually map these two backends is to go to the Vplex UI. So let's note down the device label for this device. Let's go to the Vplex UI. And if you look at the inventory for that particular device label, you would see that it has two legs, right? The virtual volume has two legs. One is on VNX and one is on the Eternus, shown by two different paths. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the mapping and then take a LUN out of the consistency group for VNX. So that means we're actually breaking one leg down and then still see if customers can access data from the other leg. So volume is being taken off from the consistency group. So when you do that, what happens is the mirror is no longer in a healthy state, right? The UI actually will show you that. Oh. So as you see, the mirror is in this stressed state. But it, this has no impact on customer data because data is being now accessed from the other mirror, right? So one leg is down, the other leg is still active, and if you go back to the application and then find the file, file is still there. Okay, that's what gives you zero downtime. One leg is completely down, one array is completely down, but you still are able to continue the business. I think that ends the demo. All right, thank you. Hello again. Um, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about the community side of the project. And um, if you forget everything I say, everything we've seen today, but you want to remember, um, there's a community site right there. Go up our head HD at github.github.io. And if you don't want to remember that either, you can just go copperheadhd.org, O-R-G, and that will take you basically to that page. From there, you can then jump over to our wiki, and there are links to our stash, which is where we have the source code. We also have an image of Copperhead in GitHub, so if you, wanna, if you prefer to use GitHub and just download everything from there, that's fine. Um, we always keep our stash repository in sync with the GitHub, um, but we are using stash for, like, if you want to do a submission of code, 
you would do that on the uh, on the stash server. Uh, for issue tracking, we're using Jira. For continuous integration, we're using Jenkins. So pretty standard um, in everything in everything in terms of the tools. Um, for our communications, um, instead of IRC, we're using HipChat. Uh, it's it's nice. It works and. Uh, there were issues with running IRC at the time between all the different companies, et cetera. So um, we decided to go with HipChat. And then for uh, forums and that sort of conversation, that's a longer term sort of conversation, questions or discussions, then we're using uh, a Google group, um, which has served us fine so far. So you know, we're using that. Um, so, but again, if you forget all of these pages, copperhead.org. On the outside, I've got some stickers and some cards which can remind you that. So feel free to take as many as you want. Just leave some for the guy next to you. Um, so things that are going on right now, let me just get down here. So we're talking to different companies, uh, storage vendors, uh, OpenStack uh, integrators, uh, northbound uh, orchestrators, and you know we're trying to figure out who who wants to collaborate who wants to play um, right now emc and intel are kind of already in all in and and, and doing development um, and we're in we're at the stage where we're like i said looking for other contributors which is why we want you to join us <laughs> uh, things that we're working on so today <clears throat> As most of you know, there's a product from EMC called EMC Viper. Copperhead is the same as EMC Viper, but it's the open source version. So EMC Viper comes out in SUSE. It's built on top of SUSE. Copperhead is built on top of OpenSUSE. And we are in the process of creating new distributions, um, platforms, so that it works on Ubuntu, that we're, we've got some people working on Docker. Uh, there's a guy who actually already built a Vagrant file, which works really well. Um, so that's one of the things we're working on, one of the projects we're looking for support and more people. Um, we're working on always improving the Copperhead on stack integration. Um, we're always looking for more southbound uh, interfaces, more being able to support more arrays from more vendors. Um, OK, this is stuck. OK. We have uh, this right here. The Copperhead command is um, one of the little projects that was built on top of it, which basically what it does is it gives you a sort of a CLI interface that's more, more like, a, like just using a, a regular shell. Tomorrow we're gonna be ha we're gonna have a a both session, birds of a feather session at 9 a.m. in Sakura S1 and S2, and then in January we are going to be doing a the second developer meetup. It's gonna be held uh, in the Oregon State University campus in Corvallis, Oregon. You are obviously all invited. It would be awesome if somebody shows up there from this thing. Come. Check, look, look me up. Send me a message on the on the Copperhead uh, forums. Uh, and with that, you know, we thank you very much. Um, there is a raffle to do next. So before I forget, has any does anybody not have a ticket? Raise your hand. Okay. Um, before that, I've, yeah. Before we re raffle the thing, are there any questions? Only the good questions will get that. Uh, oh, yes. Good questions get you an extra ticket. <laughs> we have I would hope so. I don't know. <laughs> See, I can say these things, and then she's going to be, you know. <laughs> if there's any questions, um, we have, yep, right here. Uh, we have a microphone coming to you. So uh, as you mentioned about uh, VPlex with uh, Copper HD, 
and you said that business continuity will go, right? So what about the right, right operations? Because as far as the operation is concerned, you shown the demo. But what if the right operations are going on? Actually, as I said, uh, VPlex mirror can be accessed from any site, site A or site B. So in this case, you know, probably you can assume that your host is in site A, but the two legs are in site A and site B, right? You're actually doing reads and writes from site A. So reads are served from site A, but writes have to be acknowledged by both arrays. It's a synchronous distance. Obviously, it has to be less than, round trip has to be less than five milliseconds. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? And, and then using Copperhead does not add or in any way affect um, those numbers because we are not in the data path at all. Well, this was either the most awesome presentation ever or just not really good at all because there are no questions. Hope it's the first one. Thank you very much. And so for the, for the raffle. Thank you. She has the bag. It's a secret bag. So who is the Very high one? technology right here. <laughs> it's an open source bag. <laughs> who is the lucky one? There is a number on this ticket that says 2735330. We should have a winner. Back there, I see a hand. Come on over. <laughs> Whoa. I am very jealous, but I was not allowed to enter. Thank you, everybody. So we have another session starting um, at 440 with um, Randy Bias, Amit Tank, Lachlan Everson, and Josh Bernstein. So it's a panel about um, OpenStack futures and web scaling for um, versus containers. So if you'd like to stay, uh, please feel free. We are not doing a giveaway for that session, though. <laughs>